Hi everybody, welcome back to the New York Stock Exchange. This is theCUBE plus NYSE's coverage of AI factories and the data center of the future. We're super excited to have Satish Iyer in. He's the VP and CTO of Innovation and Ecosystems for Dell Technologies, longtime CUBE alum and friend of the CUBE. Satish, great to see you. Thanks for making some time. Wonderful to see you, Dave. Thanks for, thanks for having me here. You've been busy, man. Um, you and I have been talking for the better part of a year now about the trends that are going on in AI. And, you know, I wonder if you could set up for the audience just your role. I mean, people don't think of Dell as sort of a, an, an AI honeypot, but you are basically building out an ecosystem. I say AI, I meant startup honeypot. You are building out an ecosystem mm -hmm. of startups. You're collaborating with startups. Of course, they want to work with a company like Dell, but what specifically is your role? Yeah, so thank you again. Um, so I'm part of the CTO office, uh, um, reporting to our, our global CTO, John Rose. Uh, my, my focus is purely around developing innovation and ecosystems. So I kind of do two-pronged approach. One is um, I man, you know, um, responsible for innovation we do with the customers. So we have a huge applied research team. So we take, you know, new technologies and apply it to some of the customer problems. Uh, the other aspect is startups, right? Um, uh, as you know, Dave, you know, especially in the AI world, things move really, really fast, right? Like the pace, which we can't even imagine in the past. And, you know, this is one of the biggest transformational technologies in many decades now. So I think the other area I focus on is purely to understand what is happening in the space in terms of the startups that are various startups actually coming up with really, really cool innovations to see how we can actually bring some of these things to Dell or how we can actually, you know, jointly work with them to actually solve some of the customer problems. So it's a pretty exciting goal. Well, and you know, Dell is the king of general purpose computing uh, in x86. It built its business on PCs and, and of course the enterprise off of x86. The deal we saw last week uh, from, from mm -hmm. NVIDIA and, and, and Intel is just amazing. Yeah. I want to get to that. But Dell traditionally isn't thought of as a, as a lure for startup companies. But you're building those deeper ties, as you just mentioned, into that ecosystem. Why now? What's driving this focus? And how does it align with your broader strategy? That's a great question. So I, I think one of Dell's key focus is to basically enterprise, you know, activate what we call as activate enterprise AI, right? Uh, AI, as you know, it's pretty pronged in the consumer space now. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of startups are actually working towards what it takes for us to actually, you know, apply AI to enterprise. So Dell is actually very uniquely, uniquely positioned. Like you said, we are you know, um, on one hand, we are the biggest, one of the biggest infrastructure players, um, you know, in, in terms of AI, we are the biggest infrastructure player, OEM in, in AI space. The other hand, we're also big enterprise, right? Um, we have to tie, try AI ourselves. So we are in a unique situation where we can actually understand exactly where we can apply AI in a big enterprise, and we want to take advantage of those lessons to our customers. So, and honestly, I think that's one of the main reasons startups are talking to us because when we talk about AI within an enterprise, Dave, you know this, right? Uh, enterprise AI landscape is all about data, right? And most, if not all of the rich enterprise data stays on-prem. And Dell is basically, you know, we are the leaders in on-prem infrastructure. So I think when we talk about how we can add scale and credibility to these startups by building these partnerships, every enterprise problem starts on-prem because that's where all the rich, vast, intelligent data is. And that's what gives us unique advantage on working with these startups. So let's follow up on that because 10 years ago, if, if you were a, a, a startup and you went into a venture capital to try to do a raise, if you weren't building in the cloud, they didn't want to talk to you, they didn't want you to spend the money on the CapEx. Um, so let's dig, double down on why should, they should be thinking about Dell right now. You just sort of laid out a case which, by the way, we agree with. We yeah. have written extensively about, we, we put out a post uh, about six, nine months ago, George Gilbert and I, why Jamie Dimon is Sam Altman's biggest competitor, the premise being that's where the proprietary data lives in enterprise tech, enterprise companies, Jamie Dimon being a metaphor for broad stream enterprises. But what unique value can Dell offer that hyperscalers you know, uh, might not be able to, or even venture firms? Yeah, I mean, you know, let's take a step back. Right? A lot of startups still start, I mean, you know, we, uh, right now, we have been, at least, uh, you know, since we started building a startup ecosystem, we have around 500 
or startups within our purview right now we are working with a lot of them in this you know technology space a lot of them in ai space and some of them in quantum space we are not only looking at ai but we are also looking at you know techno you know any technology transitions coming in the space but to to answer your question i think one of the one of the fundamental differences startups do start right a lot of them do it's easier for them to actually start with the cloud you know easier for them to actually develop and validate their product market fit but enterprises are realizing you know startups are realizing more and more that in order for them to be successful they have to be on prem because that's kind of when the enterprises are starting to apply ai they're always thinking about what is their most critical business problem they need to solve and which is and then where they can actually apply ai to drive the productivity and where they get the biggest roi from right so when the enterprise start looking at that they are looking at their existing business processes existing issues they have whether it's internal or with their own sub customers and that's what they want to solve and good good or bad they everything starts and i can tell you i've starting you know talking to a lot of these startups in the last almost better part of a year now it's incredible to see how many startups are actually thinking on prem i would probably say 7 out of 10 startups or yes they may have some control plane implementation on the cloud but they understand that you know vectorization and tokenization has to happen on prem and a lot of enterprises will not ship their data out so i think there that's a big advantage and a lot of startups are already thinking that way and that's incredible to see because obviously you know you and i know 15 years ago when the cloud you know wave started what happened right so i think in this time it is different and it is and i see that most of these startups are thinking really how can we solve this for the customers who are all going to be very very protective about the data right yeah. so data and security are paramount i mean that's kind of where everything starts yeah so let's connect the dots for the audience a little bit so most startups they don't have a route to to on prem in in the enterprise other than through maybe a marketplace uh, and it makes sense that they mm -hmm. start in the cloud to, to avoid those capex but be, given that the real crown jewels of companies organizations data we all know ai you know starts with data that that now there's a massive opportunity here again what intel and nvidia just announced unlocks they said they they pegged it satish at about 50 billion the tam now that's just the mm -hmm. silicon tam david yeah. floyer and i did an analysis over the weekend We actually have it. If you look at all the spending, it's it's closer to a half a half a trillion. Uh, and so, m in, as we know, most of that lives on premises. So my question is, how do you decide which startups to engage with? Is it is it are you looking for technical fit? Is it you know a tie into the to infrastructure? Is it you know Dell Capital maybe invest in them? Uh, the hybrid cr cloud angle, multi cloud. How, how do you decide? Yeah that's a that's a really good question. I, there is no easy answer, right? So I think we if I if I really look at it simply and I'll I'll give you I'll answer you in two parts. One is we you know one is we look at it what the typical architecture of, right? We are a very strongest infrastructure player, right? Then we start thinking about okay, what is that it takes for our customers to be successful in on prem ai deployment on dell ai factory? Then we broke it down into data, model and deploy, right? So we look at players within the data space anything to do with data, data data right and then we look at players within for example model space in terms of model management you know looking at various aspects of model security and then we look at you know aspect of deployment space what it takes for our customers to deploy these you know assets and then manage it by themselves because and because remember they are not they are not in public cloud so i think one is we when you look at it from an architecture up. the other as other way we looked at it is use case in right and this is actually our speed sweet spot right we actually have been really implementing ai within dell quite massively in the last you know last 18 months or so and we have a lot of you know obviously you know we are we treat ourselves as customer zero so when we look at it we are like okay what are the basic capabilities required for us to be able to drive top down use cases the use cases can be for example you know devax it could be core gen right it could be you know something to do with you know next generation support experiences it could it could it could relate to you know having the best in class you know uh, let's say invoicing mechanism or a partner mechanism for supply chain or it could have best in class you know sales chat mechanism so we consciously in dell new we have four big tracks where we are actually applying ai in the company so when we the second way to look at it is look at these use cases and say what are the startups which actually make us successful uh, allow us to be able to solve those, some of those problems it's a completely different approach so in some way you know we kind of drink our own pool right we 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 are bringing these startups 
some of them solving a problem within Dell, and then we are turning it around to say, okay, let's actually take the same approach and same tech to go solve the same problem for our customers, and our customers love it. So it, that's that, that's kind of the simple way of looking at it. Is one of them is technology gaps, another one is basically an output, right? And it's as yes, you know, and because we are applying some of these things within Dell, it's actually pretty, you know. Uh, you know, we, 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 we can actually go to the enterprises and tell really credible story in terms of what, you know, how we are bringing these startups in. And it's a very different operating model for Dell too. We are operating with a lot of these startups internally to solve some of these problems, which is actually amazing. You mentioned earlier how fast things change in AI. It's so true. Um, I go back to Dell Tech World. You mentioned 500 startups that you're working with, or at least, uh, you know, on the radar. I go back to Dell Tech World, um, which was just last spring. It, it was in May, it feels like it was quite some time ago, but you had JPMC up on the stage. That was a great on-prem example. But I want to get into yeah. some of your favorite startups. One of my favorite is Starburst. They're really not a startup anymore, but the reason I like them is because AI and data go hand in hand. Starburst gives you access to that data in a federated fashion. Uh, we heard from mm -hmm. Cohere uh, a year ago at Dell Tech Summit last November. I had a deep, deep conversation with their COO yeah. and CTO. Uh, uh, with, with Cohere doing some really interesting thing with models. They're not chasing the holy grail of AGI. They're actually going after what we call enterprise AGI, i.e. Yeah. That, yeah. that Jamie Dimon data. Glean is another one we heard. You guys made a yeah. sort of an early announcement with them. I mean, I love Glean, what they're doing in collaborative AI, um, almost sort of improving on what we've seen with Microsoft Copilot. Who are some of your favorite examples of the startups that you're working with? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, the, the the landscape is pretty broad in terms of who we touch. I mean, the examples you gave, you know, especially Glean and, and, and Cohere are really good examples of startups we started to work with and where we are applying internally um, and we are building solutions with. So if you really think about it, you know, before I give some names, I think the way we think about a success for a startup is four, four ways, right? One is we, we basically build solution with them, you know, potentially take it to our customer, uh, we leverage them internally, right, in terms of actually solving a Dell's problem within AI, and obviously we can take 180 and build a solution with the customer. We invest in them, and again, none of these are mutually exclusive, or we actually partner with them, right? So we have startups actually falling into multiple of these categories. So I would probably say, like I said, Glean, we have Cohere, we, we work with a company in Boston called Maven AGI, who actually does, um, you know, uh, customer experiences, you, you know, with AI. We, we, we work with a company we just, you know, um, called Distal, which actually does work for our supply chain. Um, I'm thinking, you know, we have Scan, which we actually do some workflow automation and services. Uh, LakeFS, which is actually uh, allowing us to actually version data, you know, version control data, which is actually pretty important for us. And, you know, it's a, it's a Israeli-based company. Uh, we work with some chip vendors. Um, and we also kind of work, you know, we, we also, in, you know, work with Super Annotate, which is kind of a, you know, data annotation company. So I can go on and on. I mean, the, I mean, do you also kind of made a comment about DTC? I mean, one of the things we are also doing now is, uh, you know, Delta Capital, uh, our venture arm, right, goes and invests in companies, and we have had really, really, you know, good record. Um, but we are also tightly partnering with DTC term. So uh, we are doing a lot of back and forth homework because you know we bring a lot of companies to the table if we think it's strategic to Dell. Um, you know, we, you know, we take it to DTC and say, hey, you know what, this is cool tech. But our goal is to kind of identify, look around the corner, identify some of the cool companies which will, will basically be, you know, we think we want to make a bet, we want to build something with them. And likewise, the opposite, right? So Delta Capital also brings to us to say, hey, you're looking for a data cleanup company or a data prep company. Can you look at this one? We have made an investment in them. So it's, it's been a very, you know, very great experience actually working with our, you know, DTC partners. And we share a lot of homework, right? Uh, in terms of what you can find. Right, and at, at G GTC this year, Jensen laid out sort of three waves of AI, AI for the cloud, AI for enterprise, and AI for robotics. The cloud, yep. frankly, right now is sort of like a, you know, <laughs> running on one cylinder. I mean, it's, it's, it's hyperscaler yep. CapEx. We're starting to see some evidence in, in, in enterprise adoption. The announcement of an x86 and CUDA uh, a hybrid stack uh, really, we see as an accelerant. So my question to you is, if AI factories are the data centers of the future, where do you see startups playing the most important role? How is Dell positioning itself to be the partner, the, the premier partner of choice for those innovators? 
Yeah, that, you know, again, you know, we talked a lot about AI, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, our, our goal is not to, you know, we are also looking at startups, I would, like I said, on which are in the technology transition. So going into things like physical AI, which is we are looking at some robotics players. Uh, I just spent class two weeks ago. Uh, I was in Australia. We did a startup day with a whole bunch of startups in the ANZ region. And one of the startups I talked to is called Airspeeder. And Airspeeder, basically, they are building a flying car. Um, like a Formula One racing, but the car flies, right? So incredible, right? I mean, you know, the, think about the amount of integration they had to bring to the table. So I think we are absolutely looking, going, you know, not just looking at enterprise AI, also going into this physical AI spaces where AI, AI is applied to robotics and physical things. Uh, but in terms of, you know, where I see a Dell position, it's also, look, the, you know, Dell is one of the, one of the only, I would say, into an infrastructure solution providers for startups that we can come, you know, really, really nicely integrate a solution across the stack, right? And then we obviously are, you know, we, we have a Dell AI factory with NVIDIA stack. We also are, you know, big on embracing open ecosystems. Uh, if you see some of the recent announcements we have made, uh, we've been working very, very closely on, you know, um, I'm going to say it because we haven't said it the whole time in this call, right? On agent, right? So we've been working on agent interoperability and agent tech. Um, you know, what it takes for enterprises to drive and adopt agentic architectures inside enterprises. So we've been working with a lot of agentic startups. So I think, you know, to me, the one of the main reasons why startups like to work with us is we not only have our AI factory with NVIDIA, but we also have embrace open ecosystems. So we allow our customers, you know, want a choice. And if customers want to actually pick the best in class, we, we are able to actually, you know, demonstrate what those partners could be, right? And the fact that we can apply some of this uh, uh, quote unquote, you know, enterprise problems. We are, we are able to actually leverage Dell as customer zero, and we are not just talking there. We are actually applying this on those Dell AI factories and showing how that actually works inside Dell. It's an amazing proof point, and enterprise love to see that. So when I actually talk to startups, they are like, "Oh, you're doing all of this stuff," and so we can validate a lot of the startup technology ourselves, right? And that's kind of that. That's one of the cool things for us to do. Yeah, well, congratulations. We didn't mention Agentic until 20 minutes in, and I'm glad you did mention it because <laughs> we have we have Walmart coming on later, and that's all they're talking about is what they've done with autonomous agents. And I would love to have yeah. you back, Satish, to talk about robotics. Uh, we did we've done a couple of sessions now uh, around robotics. I mean, it's fascinating. It's going to take some time to to evolve, but it, that that talk about Tam. That is just uh, the physical AI is just uh, a super exciting space. And I'm glad to see you guys are thinking about that as well. Uh, Satish, I'll give you the final word. I really appreciate you taking the time and the work that you're doing with startups. Uh, your thoughts uh, to, to bring us home. Look, um, uh, at Dell, we are absolutely 100% committed uh, in empowering, you know, we think that we're empowering these startups by adding scale, adding credibility, to their innovation and transfer mean some of those things to enterprise value solutions. We are the leader in enterprise AI, right? We are the leader in enterprise infrastructure. We understand what it takes for enterprise to deploy AI on-prem. And we would love for players who are actually innovating and solving unique enterprise problems to come and talk to us. Uh, we have, you know, like I said, we, we, we are broadening our technology scope. We are broadening our partner ecosystem. We are working with a lot of these small companies. It's, it's been an amazing journey and we'd love for you to come and talk to us and be part of the show. And bring them our way. We love the startups here at the, uh, the NYSE Wired and theCUBE. So thank you, Satish Iyer, for spending some time with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. You bet. And thank you, and thank you for watching AI Factories, the future of data centers, theCUBE, plus NYSE Wired. We'll be right back right after this short break. <laughs>